Greetings, survivors and friends. I'm Shadowfrax, and this is your weekly Rust update. First up, if you've been paying attention, you should know a lot about the new hot air balloon already, but as of this week, it's finally landed. This is what we know. Just like the Rahibs and rowboats, a certain number of them will spawn on a server at any one time, depending on how big it is, and can be found flopping around randomly on the landscape. To make your newly found windbag rise heavenward, simply pop some low grade in the tank and mash the big red button. I think I've spent enough time over the last few vids explaining how to fly these, so I won't bore you with it again, and for any of you who are still clueless, I won't spoil the fun of learning. But some other things to note are that they now have a small amount of storage, it takes about 4 low grade to inflate the balloon and about 15 per minute of ignition, they have 1500 health and can be repaired with cloth. These things floating around in the sky does of course mean that someone could potentially drop in on you now when you're least expecting it, unless of course. You have one of these. If hot air balloons are the disease, then Samsite turrets are the cure. And I showed you an early version of these in last week's update, but they're now fully functional. Purchased from the compound for 500 scrap each, you can stick them on foundations or floors and they'll automatically target any balloons that come into range including your own. They require a new type of SAM ammo, which can be bought again from the compound and will set you back 75 scrap for 6. This won't last you long, seeing as how it takes about 30 to knacker a balloon, but fortunately they can also be researched and crafted at a tier 2 bench for 30 gunpowder and one pipe for 6. Oh, and for all of you who thought just flying to the top of the launch site would be as easy as saying, this will only help clans, good luck getting past the 4 turrets that have now made it their home. If you can damage them enough, you can disable them for a while, but whether it's worth it or not, I'll let you decide. Over on the briny deep, the cargo ship has received an interior it can be proud of, and you can now venture down below deck, gaining entry via back and front entrances. Down here you'll find two large rooms filled with shipping containers, crates, loot boxes, and of course, walking blue barrels. Speaking of which, the ship now has multiple loot rounds, with up to three sets of loot spawning in random places during the 50 minutes it hangs around on the server, each one consisting of one locked crate, one elite crate, four military crates, and four regular ones. There's also an alternative cargo ship layout now, which you may encounter instead, and this one has a slightly more open feel. This isn't even its final form though, and you can expect further enhancements down the line, including door controls and CCTV. Talking of final forms, as I mentioned last week, the rowboat now has a new model, and while being fairly closely based on the old one, it does now at least look and feel made for the game. Interestingly, a recent commit hinted at being able to skin it at some point, but it's no longer available, so you'll just have to believe me. A few other changes worth noting. Firstly, tactical gloves have had their aim sway reduction nerfed from 100% down to 80 as it was a bit OP. Pumpkins now only have one growing season and are no longer the gift that keeps on giving. This brings them in line with all other plant life and hopefully this keeps the numbers down. Wetsuit rad protection has been reduced from 20 to 15 points and this is to prevent an exploit that allowed you to craft an outfit which would be fully rad proof. And the L96 has become a victim of both inflation and dodgy manufacturing with the bandits now wanting 700 scrap for one and its durability being less. Ouch. A few graphical enhancements now, and we're used to wind animation on grass and trees, but thanks to a new module, this is being extended to include other flappy surfaces, such as the hot air balloon and its wind sock. It's now a breeze to apply wind effects to any material, such as clothes, for instance, so look out for more of this in the future. Over the last month, all of the tree imposters were optimized to reduce the amount of empty space around them, and thanks to these efforts, savings of about 30% over the originals could really help those with low and mid-range potato cards. Also, work is being done to enhance water with proper large-scale waves being added to the otherwise pretty calm surface we have now. Not only will it look more uppy-downy, but will also add to the physics, making sailing a bit more interesting. Plus, the plan is that conditions could change, depending on the weather. There were a number of optimizations which, to be frank, will probably bore you to death if I go into them here. They included parented entity movement and network interpolation improvements, plus a lot of work to improve asset bundles. 
if you're really interested, then I think I'll let you read the whole thrilling thing on the blog, if you don't mind. Metal support for Mac OS looks like it'll be coming to Rust soon, with certain disabled features such as occlusion culling and optimised imposter rendering coming back online. And thanks to recent advancements from Easy Anti-Cheat, the team are now able to manually issue temporary game bans to players who refuse to play fair, either by cheating or repeatedly playing with cheaters. Previously, this only applied to individual servers, but can now be extended across all of them for up to a year. So. Yeah, and lastly, there are a couple of other things in the pipeline that I don't have imagery for, sadly, but hope to soon. These include a jumpsuit, which I assume will be for the skydiving feature that was touted a while back, and an oil rig, which I think it's easy to work out will be a new sea-based monument. It's at a very early stage at the moment, but I'm pumped to know more. I think it's just what the platform needs, and I will of course be drilling for more info, so stay tuned and I'll keep you in the loop. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and leave me your thoughts in the form of a comment down below. Come and check me out in all the other places including Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. I shall of course catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio!